Good evening, everybody. I'm just checking that everything is all right here. I can see Fanny's joined already uh, on my phone. The hipster is in the house already. Loads of people are joining already. Good evening. How are you? Well, good evening if you're watching in the UK. It's Wednesday night. It's 9 p.m., which means it's time for the Act on This TV book club. Um, if you're joining from the States, which I know a lot of people do, Tony Rossi, um, particularly is a regular from Chicago, good afternoon. Hope you're having a, uh, a fantastic day. Going to give people a few minutes to join, guys. I've got a brand new book for you tonight. Um, for those I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. Okay, I do a Periscope every Wednesday night called The Acts on This TV Book Club where we look at one book a month. So this tonight's book we're going to look at for the whole of February because it is February the 1st. Happy February. Well done, everybody, for getting through January. Probably one of the most uh, kind of darkest, uh, depressing months of the year, really, um, for a lot of people. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to say we all made it. Everything's good, particularly if you've been on these periscopes, because that's what they're all about. They're all about personal development, getting further in your life and career faster. Whether you're an actor or not, a lot of what we talk about applies to just everybody in life. Um, so let me know how you're doing, how your January's been, and then I'm going to introduce you to tonight's and for the rest of February's book. It's a brand new book. Um, there's actually a, a sequel to a book we've already done. Lucy, good evening. Uh, we've already done for Book Club. We did a book called um, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson. Great book. This is a follow-up. Um, actually, I don't even know if it's a prequel or a sequel. I don't know if it's the, if it's a follow-up or it's what he did before Who Moved My Cheese. Um, but it's an awesome book. I'm going to introduce you to it in uh, in a minute. How is everybody doing? First of all, let's just check in. Um, good evening, Lucy. Um, let me know what's going on in your life. What's happening? Any exciting news to report in or out of your acting career? Um, anything at all? Whilst you uh, give me your comments, I'm just going to throw up this uh, PDF here. This is the name of the book we're going to be looking at tonight, guys. It's called The Presence. Um, tonight we're going to be looking at the present and the secret to enjoying your life now. Fanny's joined again. She obviously lost her connection. She's back. Um, and whilst we're waiting for people to join, please share this scope, guys. It's going to be applicable to anybody tonight. I know I do this on Acts on This and I do it for a load of actors, but actually, you know what, regardless whether you're an actor or not, this is applicable to your life, as are all of the scopes that we do. So click the three dots that you see at the bottom of your screen, click share, Whack it out on Facebook for me. Put it out on Twitter. Let's get plenty of people to the party um, so uh, so everybody can benefit from this. Uh, if you're not part of the Acts on This Facebook group as well and you're an actor, get yourself along to that, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Acts on This TV um, because we've got like nearly, we're getting on 4,000 actors in that group um, and it's just what, it's literally the most supportive Facebook group I've ever seen for actors on this planet. Um, so make sure you do come and join that. It's absolutely awesome. If you're watching this on Twitter now and you're not watching it on the Periscope app, um, get yourself over in the group and also download the Periscope app. I know there's literally, sometimes there's three, 400 people watch these scopes on Twitter. They don't get involved live um, with the actual app. Um, they, uh, they just watch it on Twitter. If you are one of those people, download the Periscope app, follow Act on This TV, and then come and chat. You can chat like Lucy did then. Lucy said she's starting a new acting class and she's getting new headshots tomorrow. Good on you, Lucy. That's taking action in 2017. That's what we're all about. Um, so let us know how that's, uh, how that's going for you. Um, so tonight, guys, yeah, the, the book we're looking at looks like this. It's called The Present by Spencer Johnson. It says on the back of the book, the present is the best gift... Uh, that you can receive because it makes you happy and successful. We're going to find out what the present is. I'm sure you can kind of already guess what it is. And I know a lot of people will be thinking they know what it is. It's a play on words, the present, the present. But actually, it's not as straightforward as you think, okay? The gift might be the present, as in being in the present. But there's actually four things you need to do in your life in order to be present, enjoy the present, and actually utilize the present. That's what we're going to be looking at in the book. Uh, but tonight is a um, it's an interesting one tonight. We're going to be looking at, I'm just going to throw some slides up again. Um, just one chapter, well, part of a chapter of this book. If you want to read along, you can grab a copy. Just Google the present on Amazon, you know, and you will get it. It's by this guy here, Spencer Johnson. He's got a little quote there. He says, integrity is telling myself the truth and honesty is telling the truth to other people. Something I think we could all be better at, don't you? I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely making a huge conscious effort this year to be honest in my communication. I'm always totally honest, but sometimes... Don't always like being brutally honest or like, I don't know, I could communicate better with some people, I think, sometimes um, to just gain clarity, I think. <laughs> That's something that I discovered in uh, in 2016. Uh, but if you want to read along, get a copy. We're going to be looking at these pages tonight. Uh, pages 13 to 24 starts with a little bit of a preamble up to page 13. 
not really interested in reading that with you guys because it's not actually part of the story. The story is a parable, um, effectively. And it says, like I said, I read it before, the present. Uh, it's an engaging story of a young man's journey to adulthood and his search for the presence. And the present is, you can probably guess what it is, but it's a mysterious and elusive gift he first hears about from a great old man. We're going to hear a lot about that old man. And this present, according to the old man, is the best present a person can receive. Okay? So that's what we've uh, got to look forward to tonight. As always, I'm literally just going to read it you out of the book. So even if you don't want to buy this book and you don't want to spend the £6.99 that it costs, you're going to get the benefit over the next four weeks of effectively just having me read it to you. So you don't even need to buy it. If you want to save the seven quid, I'll just do it for you. Um, but hopefully you're ready, settled in. Give me some hearts if you settled in. Give me some hearts if you shared it. Um, and if you settled in, we're going to read. Like It's only 11 pages. not going to be a super long scope tonight. The whole book itself is only a few dozen pages. So we will get through it easily um, in February. So I don't want to go too hard at it straight away. Otherwise, I'll have nothing to read next week or the week before. Hearts are coming through. I can see people already. Like I say, if you're watching this on Twitter and you're not watching it via the Periscope app, come and join us next time because... Um, I want to hear from you. It's uh, it's great when I can I can read people's comments and we can all interact with each other. And at the end of this as well, I really want to know how both myself and Acts on this TV can really help you guys this year as well. If there's anything else you've not said yet that you need from me, the site, um, so we can all club together effectively and make sure that everybody's having way more success this year than they've ever had in their lives before. Fanny's back. You keep dropping off, Fanny, but she's here. Here she is. So I'm going to start off, guys. Um, I'm going to try and keep an eye on the comments as well as the book as well as try and give you guys some eye contact but it's pretty tricky um, so forgive me if I um, you know if I miss a comment or, or whatever I will stop on occasion so that I can take some comments as well so here we go it says once there was a boy okay who listened to a wise old man and thus began to learn about the present. The old man and the boy had known each other for more than a year and enjoyed talking together. One day, the old man said, It's called simply the present because of all the gifts you might receive. You will find this present in the most valuable. Uh, you, you will find this present is the most valuable one of all. So, why is it so valuable? said the boy. The old man explained, Because when you receive this gift, you enjoy things more and you are able to do whatever you do better each day. Wow, the little boy exclaimed, although not fully understanding. I hope someone gives me the present someday. Maybe I'll get it for my birthday. Then the boy ran off to play. The old man smiled and he wondered how many birthdays it would be, how many birthdays would pass before the boy would realize the value of the presents. So like I say, you're probably guessing at what the present is. I'm sure you can kind of guess, but I know most people on here won't get it entirely because, like I say, there's four key things to the present we're going to discover over the next four weeks. So it says, The old man enjoyed watching the boy play in the neighbourhood. He often saw a smile on the youngster's face and heard him laughing as he swung from a nearby tree. The boy was happy and completely engaged in whatever he was doing. He was a joy to behold. As the boy grew older the old man couldn't help but notice the way the boy worked. On Saturday mornings, he would occasionally observe his young friend mowing the lawn across the street. The boy actually whistled while he worked. While he worked, he seemed to be happy no matter what he was doing. There you go. I mean, that's, that's, that's good, isn't it? We're all like that as kids. One morning, the boy saw the old man and remembered what the old man had told him about the present. The boy knew all about presents, like the bicycle he got for his last birthday and the gifts he'll, um, he'd found under the tree on Christmas morning. But as he thought more about it, he realised that the joy of those presents didn't last very long. He wondered what's so special about the present. What could make it so much better than any other present? What could make me happier and better at doing things? Wanting answers to his questions, he crossed the street to ask the old man. He asked what a young boy might ask. Um, is the present a magic wand that can make all my wishes come true? No, the old man answered with a laugh. The present is not about magic or wishing. Unsure of the old man's answer, the boy returned to his work mowing the lawn, still wondering about the present. 
She still just doesn't get it. As he grew older, the boy continued to wonder about the present. If it had nothing to do with wishing, could it have something to do with going away to somewhere special? Did it mean travelling to a foreign land where everything looked different? The people, the clothes they wore, the language they spoke, the houses they lived in, even their money. How would he get there? He went to see the old man for the third time. (laughs) Is the present, he asked, a time machine that I could get in and go anywhere I wanted? No, the old man replied. When you receive the present, you no longer spend your time dreaming about being somewhere else. So how often do you spend your time dreaming about being somewhere else? Time passed and the boy grew into his teens. He became more and more dissatisfied. He'd hoped he'd enjoy things more as he grew older, but he always seemed to want more. More friends, more things, more excitement. In his impatience, he dreamed about what awaited him out in the world. His thoughts drifted back to his talks with the old man and he found himself thinking more and more about the promise of the present. He approached the old man again and asked, is the present something that will make me rich? Yeah, in a way it can, the old man told him. The present can lead you to many kinds of riches, but its true value is not measured in gold or money alone. The teenager was confused. Well, you told me earlier that when you receive the present, you enjoy your life more. Yes, the old man said, and you were more effective so you can do things better, and that makes you more successful. What do you mean by being more successful? The teenager wanted to know. Oh, this is interesting. What do you mean by being more successful? Being more successful means getting more of what you need, the old man said. Whatever you think is important. So, I get to decide what success is for me? The teenager asked. Yeah, we all do, the old man said. And we may change what we think success is at different times in our lives. While we're on that, give me, a, give, me, uh, give me a comment on what you think success is right now. What does it mean for you in your life right now? Because you genuinely do get the chance and the choice to decide what it is. It doesn't have to be what other people think success is. I want to know what people in here think success is for them. I've got this green drink again. It's called matcha. It's like green tea, but it's proper intense it's all right though it's supposed to be good for you let me know what you think success is um i want to know what it is for you what it means for you to be successful is it money is it happiness is it health is it wealth um what is it let us uh let us know on here so he says um yeah we all do so we all get good evening rachel we all get a uh, a chance to uh decide what success is and it might change at different times in our lives So the old man says, for you now, it may be having a better relationship with your parents, getting better grades in school, or doing better in sports. Um, Scott says, my family's happiness is his his idea of success. That's awesome, Scott. Uh, It could be getting better grades in school for this lad, or doing better in sports, or getting a part-time job after school, and getting a raise because you do the job better. Later, it may mean being more productive, and prosperous or feeling more peaceful and better about yourself, no matter what happens. That's a special kind of success. My heart's coming through for that one. So what is it for you, the teen asked. The old man laughed. At this phase of my life, it means laughing more often, loving more deeply, and being of greater service. I think that's awesome. The teen responded, And you say the present helps you do all of this? Absolutely, the old man exclaimed. Well, I've never heard anyone else talk about such a present. I'm beginning to think it doesn't exist, said the boy. The old man replied, oh, it exists. But I'm afraid you don't yet understand. And then on this page, like on Who Moved My Cheese, uh, they have these pages, guys. So it was kind kind of like sums up a little bit about what we've heard. And this is great. So it says, you already know what the present is you already know where to find it and you already know how it can make you happier and more successful you knew it best when you were younger you've simply forgotten so what do you reckon it is so far we're not through yet we've still got a few pages left to read for tonight 
we've got quite a few pages actually left to read, so we're nowhere near through. But um, but yeah, what do you reckon? If Tony Ross is in the house, I can see his little face has just appeared on the bottom there of Periscope. Um, good evening, Tony. Hope you're all right. Have another one of these drinks. So we're reading the present, Tony, which is a follow-up, or it could even be a prequel to Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson. Awesome book, though. And we're talking about what the present is that this old man is telling this little boy about. And I think you can kind of guess what the present is. Um, but I want to know if you've got more of a, I don't know, more of a deeper explanation of what you think it is. Um, so uh, I'll let I'll, I'll let you uh, let you decide. Um, so yeah, so you already knew what it was, guys. You knew it better when you were younger, but you've just simply forgotten about what it is. So the old man inquired, when you were younger mowing the lawn, um, was that a good time or a bad time for you? A good time, the little boy said. What made it good, the old man asked. The teenager thought for a moment and said, well, because I loved what I was doing. I did a good job uh, and neighbours asked me to cut their lawns as well. In fact, I made quite a lot of money for a kid my age. And what did you think about as you worked the old man inquired. Again, this is interesting. Well, when I was mowing the lawn, I thought about mowing the lawn. I thought about how I'd mowed the grass through the tricky areas and around the obstacles. I thought about how many lawns I was able to finish in an afternoon and how I could work so well. But mostly, I just concentrated on cutting the grass in front of me. He spoke about mowing the grass in a tone that made it sound like the answer should be obvious. The old man leaned forward and said slowly, exactly. And that's why you enjoyed it. You were happier and more effective at what you were doing that day. Unfortunately, the teenager um, didn't take the time to reflect on what he'd just heard. Instead, he became more impatient. If you really want me to be happier, the teenager said, why don't you just tell me what the present is and where to find it? Um, oh, and the old man volleyed back. The old, uh, and where to find it? The old man volleyed back. Yeah, the teen demanded. Well, I'd like to, the old man responded. But I don't have such power. No one can find the present for someone else. The present is a gift you give to yourself. Only you have the power to discover what it is, the old man explained. The teen was disappointed with the answer and left the old man. So this old guy, he ain't giving anything away. So this little kid, this little kid just can't figure it out at all. So he says, as the teen grew into a young man, he resolved to find the present on his own. He read magazines, newspapers and books. He talked with his friends and family. He searched the internet. He even traveled far and wide seeking answers from everyone he met. But no matter how hard he searched, he couldn't find anyone who was able to tell him what the present was. After a while, it became so tired and discouraged that he simply gave up his search. Eventually, the young man took a job working for a local company. To those around him, he seemed to be doing well enough, but he felt that something was missing. I've so been in this place when I used to do a shit job. Um, when he was at work, he thought about where else he might enjoy working more, or he thought about what he would do when he got home. His mind often wandered at meetings and even in conversations with his friends. During meals, he was often distracted and unaware of the taste of his food. In his job, he dealt adequately with his projects, but he knew he could do better. He knew his heart. He knew in his heart he was not giving it his all, but he didn't feel um, what he did really mattered. After a while, the young man realized he'd become unhappy. He thought he worked hard and that he did what he was expected to do. He usually arrived on time and felt he put in a full day's work. So many people just do this and they're still so fucking unhappy. He'd hoped to be promoted. Perhaps that would make him happier. Then one day he learned he'd been passed over for the promotion he thought he was entitled to. The young man became angry. He didn't understand why he'd been passed over for the promotion. He tried his best not to let his anger show as it was not welcomed at work. However, he could not let his anger go and it began to consume him. As the young man's anger increased, the quality of his work decreased. To those around him, he tried to act like the promotion didn't matter, but deep down inside, he began to doubt himself. Do I have what it takes to succeed? 
he wondered. Who's asked themselves that question today? Just give me some hearts. You can do it anonymously if you want. Um, who's asked themselves that question today, this week, this month, this year, multiple times today? Do I have what it takes to succeed? Because I, um, I bet lots of people have. It's, it's a recurring theme. <laughs> you know what? In the acting industry, it's a massive recurring theme. But I think in life, it's just a recurring theme. Um, full stop. Yep. Scott says, got a yes off Scott. Um, it is, it's something, it's, it's, a, it's a really l- kind of low quality question um, that does, uh, that can, unless, and well, you know what, unless the answer that you, you know, you fire right back is yes, 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 yes. Of course I have what it takes to uh, to succeed. But um, but if not, yeah, it, uh, it can consume him, like, consume you like it is this guy here. So the young man's personal life wasn't much better than his work life. He hadn't been able to get over breaking up with his girlfriend. He worried over whether he would ever find true love and have a family of his own. Again, massive recurring theme in a lot of people's lives. He found himself floundering. Nearly dropped my phone. Um, His life seemed to be a series of loose ends, unfinished projects and unattained goals and dreams. He knew that he was not fulfilling the promise he'd showed when he was younger. Every day, the young man came home from work a little more tired and a little more disappointed. He never seemed satisfied with what he was doing, but he didn't know what to do. He thought about his youth and recalled the days when life seemed simpler. He thought about the words of the old man and the promise of the present. He knew he was not enjoying his work and life. He was not as happy or as successful as he wanted to be. Perhaps he should not have abandoned his search for the present. It's been such a long time since he's spoken to the old man. He was embarrassed about how badly things were going for him and was reluctant to go back and ask for help. Finally, though, he was so dissatisfied with his work and his life that he knew he had to go back and talk to the old man. Now, we've got an option here, guys. We can kind of talk about what we've just spoken about over the last 13 pages, or I can read you a little bit more. Let me know what you'd prefer. Um... Let me know what you think so far. I think it, I think it's like quite a lot of this stuff people might think is, you know, oh, well, this is obvious. But it's stuff that we all absolutely need reminding of, like all the time, about where we are currently living. Um, and whether that is the present or whether that is like this guy who's at work and he's thinking about what he's doing when he gets home or what he did yesterday. Um, and we're not actually, like when he's cutting the gro- uh, grass, cutting the grass that's just in front of us you know he's thinking about the grass he's already cut and the grass that he's going to cut as opposed to just cutting the grass that's actually there um so let me know give me some give me some comments um if you want a little bit more or whether you've got comments on on what we've already uh, already read i can see people are still joining the scope so maybe i should carry on read a few more pages um, and also let me know if you've read this book before as well It'd be interesting to know if other people have um I've seen the book, know anything of it. I haven't read it. I'm reading it like practically live in terms of like I've skimmed over this. Lucy says a bit more, please. Give me some hearts if you want some more. I'll read some more. Um, means we've got less for next week and the week, before, week after, but it's all right. We can riff it. It's absolutely fine. So anyway, right. Okay, we'll read some more. He's going back to see the old man again, guys. Okay, he says the old man. Uh, Mary's here. Good evening, Mary. So the old man was pleased to see him. He immediately noticed the young man's lack of energy and obvious unhappiness. Concerned, he encouraged the young man to tell him what was on his mind. The young man described his earlier frustrating attempts to find the present and how he'd given up his search for it. He talked about his current troubles, but to the young man's surprise, things didn't seem so bad in the old man's presence. The young man and the old man had a wonderful time together, talking and laughing. The young man realised how much he liked to be with the old man, He felt happier and more energetic in his presence. He wondered why the old man seemed more alive than most other people he knew. What was it that made him so special? So what was it that made this old man just so special? Well, we're going to find out. He said to the old man, I feel so good on the days I'm with you. Does it have something to do with the present? Fanny's back. Good to see you, Fanny. You've made it back. It has everything to do with it, the old man answered. The young man said, I wish I could find the present and finding it today wouldn't be too soon. The old man laughed and said, in order to find the present for yourself, think of the times when you were happier 
and more effective, times when you were more focused and felt more successful. You already know where to find the present, you're just not aware of it. He continued, when you stop trying so hard, you'll find it easier to discover. In fact, it'll become obvious. Then the old man suggested, why don't you take some time away from your regular routine and let the answers come to you? Following the old man's suggestion, the young man accepted a friend's offer to spend some time at his cabin in the mountains. Alone in the woods, the young man found things, moved at a slower pace, and life looked different. He took long walks and reflected on his life. Why isn't my life more like the old man's, he wondered. The young man had learned that while the old man was modest, he'd been very successful in the world. He'd started at the bottom of a highly respected organisation and had risen to the very top, and he'd helped the community in many ways. The old man had a strong and loving family and many loyal friends who often came to see him. He had a wonderful sense of humour and wisdom others enjoyed and respected. Most of all, there was a calm about him that the young man had rarely encountered. The young man smiled and, uh, as, and, he has the, oh, and he has the youthful energy of someone half his age. The old man was clearly the happiest and most successful person he'd ever met. So what was the present that gave the old man so many good qualities? I'm going to keep reading because I'm getting more and more into this now. Regardless if anyone's even like watching, I'm just going to keep reading. <laughs> As the young man walked for miles around the lake, he reflected on what he knew about the present. Okay, so these are all the things he knew about the present right now. It's a gift that you give to yourself. He'd known it best when he was younger. He'd simply forgotten it. However, his mind drifted back to his failures. He remembered exactly where he was when he found out he didn't get the coveted promotion. It was as if it had happened yesterday. He was still angry. The more he thought about it, the more he worried about going back to work. Then he noticed it was growing dark and he hurried back to the cabin. Once inside, he lit a fire to ward off the chill. He noticed something he hadn't seen before. As he stared at the fire, he became aware of the cabin's great fireplace for the first time. It was made of, a large, of large and small stones. A minimum of mortar held one stone to the next. Someone had very carefully chosen, chiselled and perfectly placed each stone. Now that he was aware of it, he appreciated and enjoyed what had been right in front of him all along. Whoever had built the fireplace was more th uh, than a mason. He was an artist. As the young man marvelled at how extraordinarily well be built the fireplace was, he thought about how the mason must have felt as he worked. He must have spent a significant amount of time completely focused on the job before him. It was clear the mason's thoughts had not wandered or strayed often. The work uh, was good. It was unlikely that he'd been spending too much time thinking about a past love or that night's dinner, nor could too many of his thoughts have raced on to what he would do when he'd finished or what he could have been doing that he might have enjoyed more. The young man could tell by looking at the masonry masterpiece that it was obvious the mason had succeeded. He must have had many moments when he concentrated on nothing else but the task at hand, and as a result he enjoyed his work more. What was it, the old man had said? To find the present, think of those days when you were happier and more effective and feeling more successful. This is the last page for tonight because we've got a little, a little, uh, little thing here. Little revelation. The young man recalled talking with the old man about mowing lawns when he was a boy. He remembered how he'd focused on cutting the grass and had not let anything else distract him. When you're fully engaged in what you're doing, your mind doesn't wander. You enjoy life and you're happier and more effective. You're intent only on what is happening at that moment and that um, focus and concentration leads to your success. He realised he'd not felt that way for a long time about work or anything else. He spent too much time being upset about the past or worried about the future. The young man gazed at the inside of the cabin. He stared again into the fire. At that moment, he wasn't thinking about the past and he wasn't anxious about what might happen in the future. He simply appreciated where he was and what he was doing. Then he smiled. He realised he felt good. He was simply enjoying what he was doing. He enjoyed being in the present moment. In a rush, it hit him. Of course. He knew what the present was, what it had always been, what it is 
right now. And then it says on this page here, another one of these little uh, little kind of uh, summary pages. It says, the present is not the past and it is not the future. The present is the present moment. The present is right now. I'm going to leave it there for tonight because then what's going to happen, guys, we're going to go on to actually look at three, well, actually four things that you really need to do in the present to really utilize the present in order to have success. Living just in the present unconsciously is not enough to actually bring you the fulfillment and the happiness and the success that they're talking about in this book just now. It's going to go on and it's actually going to give us four things that you need to be fully conscious of. One of them that I absolutely was not aware of. Um, and we're going to look at those next week, the week after, and the week after that. But I want to know, give me some comments. I'm going to plug my phone in here, make sure I don't run out of charge. Um, I want to know, for those who are joining us live, um, how often you think you do live in the present or do you find yourself comparing yourself to other people, worrying about what you did yesterday, thinking you're not good enough, um, worrying about like, will you ever have success, worrying about the future, tomorrow, all that kind of sh shit that everybody kind of um, focuses on and that robs them of literally the present. You see, it is a present there. I know it's cheesy as hell. People say, you know, the present is a gift. Uh, that's why they call it the present. Um, but genuinely, particularly when you can employ the four things we're going to look at over the next couple of weeks, or the next three weeks, um, it really, really is. And if you guys are living with massive regrets, guilt, also living with fear of what's coming tomorrow, fear of auditions you might have got next week, um, anything like that, then you are robbing yourself um, of so much. Uh, Scott says, I often look at the past and forget about the present. But it's just like, it's, everybody does, Scott, mate. You're not like, you know, you're completely not on your own. Everybody does. You've got to be conscious um, of where you're putting your focus. And we do this as kids. As children, we just, you know, we just literally enjoy the moment. I mean, you can see, it's so sad sometimes. You can see really, really sick children. Um, Lou says, worry about uh, lots, but recently learned how not to overthink things. Well, that's good, not overanalyzing stuff. But yeah, sometimes can't you? you can see really, really ill children. Bless them. And they might have tubes all coming out of their nose and, you know, carrying oxygen on their back and that kind of thing. You see them in documentaries. And then they just go to Disneyland or something. And they're just so in the present. They just, you know, their faces light up. They're just like, right, I'm not worried about the future or all this stuff I went through yesterday. I'm just in the moment, in the present, and I'm enjoying everything that's going on around me. Because ultimately, that's all we have right now, as depressing as it might sound. All we have, guys, is this. It's literally this periscope. That's all That's all I have, right? I mean, that's, that's guaranteed in my life. Um, and I enjoy it. Hopefully, you do as well. But, um, but yeah, this is literally it. You know, the, we can't take anything else kind of for granted. And um, I often say to people, you know, people occasionally, like if they, you know, will request like a, a meeting with me or coffee or something like that. And I have to decline because, um, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, request that sometimes. And I feel terrible declining, but I have to say, look, it's not because I don't want to spend, you know, any, uh, any time with you because you, your time isn't the most important thing or most precious gift you can give to somebody. It's your presence. So I could come and have a coffee with you, but you know what? I'm going to have so many things on my mind and so many things to do. I'm not going to be fully present with you. So there's not any point in me coming for a meeting right now because I'm not going to be fully there. When I'm with somebody, I want to, you know, turn my phone off, look them in the eyes um, and give them value. And I can't always do that if I've got a million things going on in my life. Um, so it's not even about time. Sometimes it's about your presence and being present in the moment that's so, so powerful. Um, there's no point, you know, when, I mean, how many times when you go for an audition, you know, occasionally the casting director will be so distracted, you'll be doing your piece and they'll be like, it's on the phone. And you'll be like, are you even, <laughs> are you even watching? <laughs> even looking at me? Do you even have a clue what I'm doing? Um, and it's not because they're not giving you the presence. They're giving you your time, their time, because they're there, you know, physically they're there, but they're not giving you, the hearts are coming through there. So I think other people have, uh, have experienced that, but their presence isn't there. And that's what's so, so important. Um, so I'm excited about um, continuing to read this. I, Like I say, I haven't read all of this. That The few pages I read there extra, I hadn't even read. I'd read all the other pages tonight uh, before the scope, but I've not seen uh, anything of uh, of the rest of the book. 
Um, let me know what you think of it, if you're enjoying it. Um, and I also want to just throw up on the screen uh, this again. Um, this was part of the first chapter. So it says, you already know what the present is. You already know where to find it. And you already know how it can make you happier and more successful. You knew it best when you were younger. You have simply forgotten. And I think like on a daily basis, we can all be guilty of just forgetting and rushing around. I do this in my own life. How many people do this? Give me some hearts if you do this. So I put deadlines on myself because that's, you know, that's a big part of goal setting is to work towards a deadline. But sometimes I forget that I'm the only person who has instilled that deadline on me. And if I need to move that deadline for a genuine reason by a day or a week or a month or whatever it takes, ultimately I'm in charge. But I'm putting so much pressure on myself. <laughs> I begin to rob myself of the present because I've um, I've put all this pressure of this deadline on myself. That it's almost like someone else has set it for me. And I'm like, wait a minute, Ross. Just remember who set this deadline. If you genuinely need to move it, and it's not because you're being lazy or you're not working towards it, because you know life gets in the way sometimes, and sometimes plans have to change, and you've got to be flexible. Then it's totally cool. Be in the present. Enjoy what you're doing now, and don't worry about moving that deadline. It's totally cool. Put it forward you know, to a, uh, you know, a, put it back to, you know, to a, to a later date if, if necessary. Um, but yeah, you do have to re remind yourself every single day um, to live in the present, you know, be present when you're with other people, put your phone the other way around on the table when you're going for a coffee with somebody. Don't constantly have notifications or put it on do not disturb. Don't constantly have notifications popping up that you keep getting distracted when you're talking to somebody because you're not present. Um, you know, that'll only kind of take you to a spiral decline, really, when you're just because you'll get a notification with like an alarm for another thing you've got to do after this or something like that. And you'll be thinking about that or someone will send you an email and you'll see, oh, my God, I've got to reply. Um, you know, you're, you're not living in the present. Thus, you are robbing yourself of enjoyment. And so I will um, carry this on next Wednesday, guys. And um, before that, we've got a um, a Periscope on Monday night, Motivation and Mind Hacks. Like I say, if you're watching this on, on Twitter and you're not watching it via the Periscope app, like the people I can see on here who are watching it now, um, then follow me. All you need to do, in fact, let me just, again, I've got, I've got all this on slides. I don't know why I'm, why I'm saying this. I've got this here. Let me... Uh, let me put this up for you. Um, these are the dates of when we do this, for those who are new who are watching. Monday nights, 9 p.m. UK time. Motivation and Mind Hacks. That's a personal uh, development periscope. Um, all about being more motivated, being more productive, getting further in your career faster. Some things might apply solely to the acting industry. Other things just apply to life. Wednesday nights, we're going to do the book club. So we've got three more weeks on the present. Going to be uh, continuing to uh, to read the um the rest of this book to you the whole story like i say you don't even need to buy it if you don't want to uh, that's going to be every wednesday in february um, and to be alerted about when i go live all you need to do is follow act on this tv follow on twitter for a start because loads of stuff goes on on twitter um but you also have the same username on periscope that you have on twitter so follow uh, at act on this tv on periscope and for those who uh, are watching this on twitter right now i use the periscope from my personal account I no longer do that. Everything comes in through Acts on This TV. So if you are waiting for me to periscope from my personal handle, which is Ross A. Grant, no longer doing that. Everything is going to be from Acts on This TV. So make sure you're following Acts on This TV. Do a search for it. Subscribe. Turn your notifications on. And then every time I go live, you are going to get the um, you're going to get the notification. So you're not going to miss a single thing. Um, so there we go. I hope it's been uh, enjoyable. It's quite a short one tonight, really. I mean, what time are we on now? It's only 22. It's only 40 minutes. I say short, but 40 minutes is still 40 minutes, isn't it? <laughs> so I massively uh, appreciate you. Like I said at the start, I want to know what... If you're watching this and, you don't, and you've never piped up on Twitter or you've never said anything in the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV, and you are an actor... Let me know how actsonthis.tv can help you this year. Tweet. If you need anything retweeting or a showreel retweeting or a short film retweeting or some crowdfunding that you're doing retweeting, just include at actsonthistv. Um, don't make it just dead generic. You know, let me know, like, you know, what it is you're doing. Don't just send a link, for instance. Um, you know, explain a little bit in the short amount of space you've got on Twitter uh, or in the Facebook group. And, um, and let me know how, uh, you know, how... 
I and the site. Got nearly 14,000 followers here on Twitter. Can help you, can publicize stuff. And there's nearly 4,000 super motivated, inspired actors in the Facebook group. And the conversations that go on in there are awesome. Everybody's so supportive. Um, and just, you know, more and more people are getting involved in the conversation. There's a lot of people I know lurk and just read. They don't always join in. If you are one of those, join in. Um, it's really cool. It would be great to actually you know, get to know you guys better. And if you're in Manchester, by the way, and you're in the north, this Saturday, the uh, 4th, 4th of February, yeah, it's the 4th, um, at Home Theatre, um, which is right near Deansgate train station, we're having an in-person meet-up, and that's on this in-person meet-up where we go have cake and coffee, talk, acting, chat, everybody gets to network and help each other. Um, make sure you come down to uh, to visit us there as well. If you want to RSVP, you can do that via the Facebook group. You just join the Facebook group. Again, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. And then in the events tab that you'll see on the page, you'll be able to RSVP to that. I've missed nearly all of this scope, says Fanny. Well, Fanny, luckily for you, there's a replay. Uh, straight after I end this, you are going to be able to, uh, to replay the scope. Um, and you'll also be able to watch it on YouTube from tomorrow. If you are watching this on YouTube and you are one of the people watch it on the replay massively appreciate you come and join us live next time but if you want to watch any of the 155 periscopes we've done so far over the last year um fanny's got a dodgy connection she says tonight then go to youtube and search for acts on this tv again if you want to just go straight there youtube.com forward slash acts on this tv and you'll find 155 replays of these periscopes to keep you going you'll also find them on our main website act on this.tv they're all over the show and they live on twitter as well literally forever as well fanny so you've got plenty of opportunity to um to join in and well not join in because technically it's a replay but you've got plenty of opportunity to rewatch um and listen to the story but i think it's great it's such a simple book a simple story but it's it's powerful and you know and sometimes the most obvious things you know the most it's it's common sense isn't it but as i always say common sense is just hardly ever common practice all this shit people know on an intellectual level they know they should be doing it do they do it no because it actually requires a little bit of effort and they get too swept up in all of the bullshit um and then they're at the end of the day thinking oh god you know why am i feeling like i'm feeling well because you're not practicing this stuff is like a muscle, a mental muscle. You need to practice being in the present, living with gratitude, um, you know, all kinds of uh, the positive psychology strategies that we talk about on these scopes require effort, investment, time. Yes, it's easier to watch Netflix than it is to jump on a periscope at 9 p.m. on a Monday and a Wednesday night. But if you do jump on these periscopes, it's the people who join these who are going to be having more success than those guys sat there watching Stranger Things or whatever they're watching on uh, on Netflix. So I appreciate you massively um, if you are watching. Um, also do a podcast, guys. I'm gonna, I didn't release an episode last week. Apologies, but I'll release an episode for this Friday on iTunes called Five to Thrive. Just search for Act on This TV again. Everywhere it's Act on This TV. Just search for that on any platform and you'll find something to do with this channel. Um, and I'll, I'll release a brand new episode of that. Again, a personal development short podcast on a particular area of life that's going to help you get further faster. Um, so appreciate you. Hope it's been useful. Uh, what I'm going to do, um, I've, I've edited the latest acts on this TV um, interview, which was with an actor called George Bukhari. Unfortunately, due to, Sony's back again. Unfortunately, due to a software update that the company whose software I used to export the edited product um, I'm waiting for a, an update. I can't export it. There's a bug in an update they released this week, which means I can edit it, but I can't export it. So I can't show you that interview yet, um, but it's awesome. I'm really excited about it. I should be able to release it by the end of next week. Um, in the meantime, for those who haven't got a clue what the Acts on This TV interviews look like, I'm going to play you a one-minute trailer of one of my favorite ones so far with a casting director called Michael Jackson from Beverly Keogh Casting. Beverly Keogh casts some of the biggest drama in the UK, stuff like Happy Valley, Scott and Bailey, um, just massive, massive uh, dramas. The brand new um, Snatch that's coming out, um, a UK uh, TV series based on the film Snatch, um, looks awesome. She cast that as well. Um, but this is Michael from Beverly Keo Casting. I'm going to give you a little minute's worth of the, like a little trailer. Ignore the date on the end of it. This was released like last August, I think. Um, but this is just to show you um, the type of thing that I do. And I think Michael, uh, he's just an interesting character. Uh, you can tweet him at Michael Casting, um, I think is his Twitter handle. Drop him a line, tell him Ross sent you. Um, he's a top guy. He's a great character. So I'm going to play this to end, guys. And I will see you on Monday night. 
um, for a brand new Periscope, a motivation and mind hacks one. No idea what we were talking about, but be there to find out. So thank you. Massively appreciate you as always, particularly on the replay. Thanks for joining us right till the end there. Uh, it's been a bit of a long slog. And uh, here's uh, a little bit of Michael. Lucy says, thanks. Thanks so much as always. Ross says, Fanny, appreciate you, Fanny. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate you from watching Chicago. Simon Hibbs been here from the start. Appreciate you, man. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, check this out. He's a good lad, Michael. All right, I'll catch you with you soon. Bye for now. So people come out of all these drama courses and whatever with 30 grand worth of debt, thereabouts, and I have no idea what the business is all about. Once the actor can find that you can act and be himself, then you'll succeed. Because we bring people in because of what they are, not what they can be. We get a wish list from the production company, we get a wish list from the director, the wish list from the producer, a wish list from the client, and we put the wish list together. How do you get onto one of those lists? It's difficult. <laughs>